So welcome everybody. Welcome to a new human experience podcast. Today is May the 14th, 2021. And our topic this evening is identity. The, the theme for May is know thyself. So that's why this week I would like to talk about identity. So to start with, who do you identify with? Do you identify yourself as a man or as a woman? Do you identify as a Canadian, an American, a Chinese, a British, Russian, or any other nationality? Do you identify yourself as being healthy or being ill? Do you identify yourself as being good or bad? as being right or being wrong. So who and what we identify with becomes an, an extra lens or an extra point of view that we interpret our experience with. Recently, I actually heard someone shared her experience with um, getting the virus. So, she she mentioned that she um, a friend asked her to go drop by and just you know have a chat with her, and so before she she um, said yes or decided to go, she actually asked in, in her higher self to see if it's okay to visit that friend and got a confirmation from her higher self that it's okay. Go ahead. But however, as the result of the, that visit, she actually um, got ill, got um, ill from the virus. And so she did mention that even though um, she got ill, but she didn't experience too much discomfort. However, um, she didn't really feel like eating much at all for about two weeks and after she started to get better and and everything else returning to normal she actually felt a lot better if it it seems like her um um the because of the change in her diet to, while she was not feeling so well it actually helped her body to detox and become more um, healthy in that way. And when she got feeling better, she actually, you know, have a chat, have a check in with her higher self. What gives? How come you said yes to go? And uh, I, I went and I got ill. What, what, what's the, um, what's the, the logic behind that? And so her higher self shared with her that, well, they actually deliberately sent her into the her to go visit her friend so that she can get the virus because that's one of the ways that her higher self can can actually orchestrate it so that she can slow down her, her schedules so she can stop all the other activities that she's been so um, trying so hard to occupy herself with <clears throat> and be able to get her to switch her diet very um, like at a, a short notice. And this is really part of how her higher self was able to get her be more prepared to, to go into the fifth dimension because when, and, and she actually did feel that her, her body was becoming more crystalline and she did feel the, the herself getting more sensitive, her sense of hearing, sense of taste, sense of um, just being able to pick up on on her surrounding is much more heightened, which these are all hallmarks for shifting into fifth dimension living. And so the, the, the point of me relating this story is that 
if you ask any anyone, they would, of course, think that um, getting the virus, getting ill is not a good thing. However, if we can just let go of the labels, let go of of the identity of you know it's you know, you, you got the virus. It's um, so when we can get rid of our preconceived judgment about certain identities, about certain um, situation, and actually just flow with whatever happens and be able to simply experience the, the virus without any preconceived idea of whether this is good or bad and just flow with the virus. Actually, it's uh, the, the, the virus itself um, didn't seem to cause too much discomfort and it actually acted as a catalyst, a very beneficial catalyst in the case of um, this person who got more prepared to, to shift into fifth dimension living. So it is about letting go of the identities. Our mind's job is, is to sort, to group, and to focus on giving us what it is that we want to know. That's the way our mind works. It's because that um, at all times, all the time, we are constantly bombarded by information. There are thousands, if not millions, of bits of information that is coming at us from all different directions, um, whether it is energetically or whether it's actually some, some sound or it could be um, it could be uh, it could be a taste. It could be so many things. All these information that is constantly coming at us, and how our mind actually works in order to um, be able to function in this this overstimulation is that our mind's job is to screen out the majority of the information that we are not ready for, or somehow um, we, because of the identity, the identities that we have put on ourselves because of the um, judgments and all that, that we programmed very unconsciously, programmed our mind to filter out all those things that somehow does not match what we identify with and and what's left and what's left is really is the things that we um at a conscious level wants to pull in for example if i identify myself as being vulnerable then my mind would automatically pay more attention to information that has higher potential of um, keeping me safe. And also I would be the, the information that is um, going to confirm and affirm and agree with my, my idea that I'm vulnerable. So I would be able to hear more incidents that kind of confirm that idea to me. See, if I don't uh, do this, then I'm vulnerable. If I don't take, you know, this, this um, vitamin or if I don't do certain things, then I'm more vulnerable. So all of these, when I put on that identity that I'm vulnerable, then these are the, the, the universe and also my mind would sift through all the, the millions bits of information that is coming at me every moment to um, kind of help me to, to have more of an experience of being vulnerable until I get to the point where I'm completely saturated until I finally say, hey, 
I'm, I'm done with feeling vulnerable. I've had enough of the experiencing vulnerable and I want something else. And when I become, when I make myself or when I decide that I'm ready for something else, then my mind will start to switch around and start to pull in other information. However, that is how our mind works is whatever we identify with, whomever we identify with is um, acting as a filter, as the lens, the information would come in and information that does not fit in with our identities, with the things and the places and the people that we identify with. And those are the things that we, um, we don't even notice. It's something that even though the information is coming at us, our, our consciousness actually just screen it out. And we somehow um, is able to overlook those information. And even if somebody puts those information right in front of our place, because we have all these identities that we hang on to so, so um, wholeheartedly and we subscribe to so, so much that even if information that, that um, is, does not support whatever it is that we identify with comes into our consciousness somehow we just manage to gloss over it and not be affected by it. So that's how our mind works. And the faster way of expediting this, this process of saturation, because when we are saturated with a certain experience, we'll come to the point where we choose to not focus on that any anymore. However, a faster way of um, of a faster way of getting to that point is to actually pay attention and observe what it is that we identify with and set an intention to dissolve those identifications. So what do I mean by that? When we hear the words mother, father, God, teacher, friend, Satan, healthy, powerful, weak, worthless, or priceless, love, hate, and so on, and so on. Each of these words can conjure up and evoke certain reactions in each of us. No particular reaction is really right or wrong. We, we each um, attach our own unique feeling and, and attachment to those, those words, to those kind of more, um, well, a lot of the words, we have certain emotions and reactions attached to it. It does not mean that our emotions and attachments are right or wrong. They just are. And, and we cannot know what being powerful is if we have no knowledge of what being weak feels like. And we really have no idea what good is without experiencing what bad is and and also with the pairing of you know good and evil with the pairing of god and satan all those things our identity is kind of like a, a set of training wheels all our identities we, we identify maybe as a mother, or as a father, as, as a teacher, as a friend, as being powerful, as being um, 
worthy of or as being all of that. All these identities are really training wheels to assist us to play a role. There is a role that um, goes with the, the word that's associated with mother. It's because um, each person who has ever had a child has this unique, their own unique experience as being a mother or a father. And, um, and also as a collective, when we say the words mother or father, we are not just tapping into our own experience as a mother or as a father. We are also tapping into this experience of all the people who had ever been a mother and all the people who has ever been a father. So all of those, it's, it's kind of each word has its own energy field. Each identity has its own um, identity fields. And for example, um, if you think of Chinese, so there is a certain um, ways of a certain character traits that you would associate with being a Chinese. Same thing with being Italian or being Greek. So all of these, these different nationalities has certain um, collective energy field that you access when you, when you um, use that word. It kind of calls up, even though your own experience of, of um, knowing someone who is Chinese or knowing someone who is Italian or any other nationality may be very different from what the, the collective's um, energy field is. However, there is that cross-contamination as well. So when we use these identities in order to um, assist our, ourselves to, to kind of give some instructions for our minds to filter in the, the information, the, uh, the, our experiences, according to the identities we, ident we, we kind of hang on to, these are in a way created a, a barrier for us because um, talking about Italians in general is very different from knowing someone who is Italian and having a one-on-one -on -one experience with them, it's, it can be a completely different experience. So it is kind of like when we look at a map, um, let's say a map of Toronto versus the experience of actually walking through the streets of Toronto and interacting with the, the, the people who live in Toronto is very different. So when you actually read about the, the people in Toronto and looking at a map of Toronto. So that is really what identity does. When we adopt an identity, it's kind of a, a shorthand way for us to create a, a set of experience that removed us from being able to truly experience that the moment. And when we start to, for example, um, when you think of, oh, Mother's Day, all of that conjure up what Mother's Day is versus you actually going to visit your mother. Um, 
it's a very different experience. It's neither better or worse. It's just very unique. When and also when you can stop thinking of your your mother as your mother, and just being able to spend time with her as who she is in this moment, not as someone who has changed your diapers many times and and who has gone through the whole journey. With you, but just be with her in this moment. It's very, it's a very different experience than to just every time you、um, go in with her is to think of this this、um, idea that oh she's my mother, so I have to treat her in a certain way. It. It kind of、um, is a short change. You you may you may be really short changing her because your mother is not a static being. Your mother is、um, changing all the time, and so you would be able to when you when you're able to drop. Identifying her as a mother and just be with her, just spend time with her, as who she is, and also when you spend time with her, you are not her daughter. You are not a daughter. You are simply another eternal essence spending time with an eternal essence who has played a role as a mother for you. So these two are、uh, very different experiences, and the more we can actually drop the identities and start to feel the and be in the experience in that moment, we can actually start to notice more things, just as our identity. Gives our give some sort of、um, instructions to our mind to filter things out. When we let go of the identities, we actually and and just be in the experience. We can actually start to recover more of ourselves and discover more of ourselves as well, so that we. Don't just、um, always have the same or similar kind of interactions with our mother or any other family member or anyone, for that matter. That we don't just have a static relationship. In that that relationship, that experience is always current. Is always in the moment. We allow ourselves to be in the moment as well, to actually experience and be with that the that experience, and that is how we can kind of、um, fast track in order to grow our own consciousness because. Um, our own consciousness, when we are able to let go of the identities, it helps us to embrace change more. We are no longer living through a, a static identity. We actually allow ourselves to be always present, always current. And also, so so that's really one of the the major points I want to to bring out this evening is the more identities or more things we identify with, the less real, the less genuine, the less in the moment we are with who we are 
changing and becoming all the time. And also when we um, start to let go of our identities and not let ourselves be dictated by whether we oh, I am a mother I'm, or I'm a woman of a certain age, I have to act a certain way, is to, when I am able to let go of that identity, then I can just be with who I am and, and also respond and be with the moment rather than having this, this voice in the background this, that tells me, oh, you're not supposed to do that because, you know, you have this identity, you have to behave a certain way in order to maintain that identity. The more we need to maintain um, an identity, then the less we get to know who we truly are in this moment, because we are always changing and we and when we actually allow ourselves to change, when we let go of the identities, it's easier to move. It is easier to grow and um, be comfortable with whatever shows up. We don't need to refer to that, that set of playbook that says, oh, um, I am in mother mode, so that's why or only these sets of behavior is, is appropriate. And the other benefits of letting go of identity is that we, we start to actually experience ourselves. We start to um, we start to get to know ourselves, not just as, as a body. We start to, when we start to let go of seeing ourselves as a body, when we, and we can actually start to let go of seeing ourselves as any of the labels, then we get to experience who we truly are. And this in being able to experience ourselves is how we can, it's the fastest way to grow our consciousness. When we allow our minds to Because what our mind does is it focus on what it is that we identify with. And when we can drop all of those, it actually allows our mind to start to look at ideas that we haven't noticed before. We start to become more creative we start to welcome in new ideas, which we have never um, even get to expose to because our mind is so good at deleting information according to our identities. That all of a sudden we can, we can actually start to entertain new ideas start to have new thinking and start to be more playful at experimenting with all these new ideas that is able to come in because we no longer filter them out automatically. It is actually allowing us to, to flow and be flexible as well. So these are really two ways to help us shift our consciousness and grow our consciousness and be able to get to know 
who we truly are. Not as, not just as this body, not just as our um, habits, but as eternal essence that is always changing, always learning always experimenting and always open for new experiences. And that's all I want to talk about this evening on the topic of identity.